In this video, we're going to talk about variables and input and types. So, first things first, a variable is when we associate a name with a value. Now that might seem a little bit abstract, but let's have a look. We are going to create a variable. I'm going to call my variable Steve. This is making a point. The program doesn't care what you call your variables. Okay? You should call them something sensible because it should make sense to you and to other people you're working with. But the program really doesn't care as long as you are consistent. So I'm going to set Steve to 45. Okay? And uh, what I'm going to do in Thony is I'm going to turn on variables. So I'm clicking on view. In fact, I'm going to move it over a little bit like this, view, and I'm going to turn on variables, and it's going to give me this window over here. Now, I've got some variables from uh, the last video I was doing, but they'll disappear when I click debug. So, what happens in this statement is, uh, this is called an assignment statement, and it's going to assign this value here, 45, to the variable Steve. It will work out everything on the right hand side of the equals first and then it will uh, associate that value with Steve. Let's have a look. So we've got a very simple thing at the moment which is just 45 and then it associates it with Steve and now Steve is associated with 45. That means if later on we say print Steve and run it, it will print 45. So our program can remember something. Now, I was talking about evaluating everything on the right hand side. So if I do times three minus 100, follows basic bid mass rules, uh, then if I debug this, what you'll see is First of all, it's going to break down this expression. It's going to do the multiply first. So we've got 45 and 3. We multiply them together. 135. Then we've got 100. We take 100 away from the 135. We end up with just 35. And then 35 gets associated with Steve. Last of all, we run the print statement. And of course, because Steve was 35, it prints out. 35. This is how assignment works. It works exactly the same with strings. So if I say um, stuff like this, then what you've got is it will print stuff and it's working exactly the same thing here. So uh, we step in, we've got stuff and stuff gets put into Steve as you can see here and then when we finish the program stuff gets printed out. Again, if I uh, add uh, a space in here and then I add uh, nonsense and I'm even going to convert that into uppercase like so. Don't worry if you're not sure about how to do that. I'm going to debug this and I'm going to step in it calculates, first of all, what stuff is. Second of all, it gets the space. Third of all, it adds those together. Then it looks for the next thing. So it gets nonsense, and then it converts it to uppercase, and then it puts those together. And lastly, it gets associated into Steve. And then, of course, it will print Steve. Very, very simple, okay? Uh, don't overcomplicate what you think the program is doing. It's following these exact rules every single time. Now, here's something new. If I write Steve, it's set to five, and then Steve is set to 17 as a number, what we'll see when we run it is it just prints out 17. Let's go through this in debug. Very, very simple. First time, 
Steve gets associated with 5. And then we say, well, actually, associate Steve with 17. Steve is now 17. So 17 is what gets printed out. OK. So let's try that again. Steve. And this time we're going to set it to an integer, 22. And then I'm going to say Steve is set to Steve plus uh, 8. Now, this is interesting because this almost looks like it's an equation, but it's not an equation. It's an assignment. So I'm going to debug this. So Steve is set to 22. And we can see that here. Now, watch what happens to Steve here. Steve gets converted to its current value, which is 22. Remember, the whole right-hand side gets worked out before it puts it back. Then we've got 8. 22 plus 8 is, of course, 30. And Steve becomes 30. And now we print Steve. OK, I'm going to start changing the names of my variables because Steve is driving me a bit bonkers now. So um, when we're working through our code, we have to look through the assignments. We have to look at the right hand side of the assignment and see what is actually going on. We can run it through Thony to check. OK, so let's do some input. Of course, we can assign things, but actually all programs need input really to be very useful. So, uh, whilst we could have said, Steve, uh, or let's call it name, a sensible name, uh, name is set to input, and you form the input statement like this. Now, you have the option of leaving it blank like that, in which case it will wait for an input, or you can actually put a prompt question in here. So, I can say, what is your name? like so. Now, down here, I can then put in print name. Very obvious. Uh, I know I'm going over this in a lot of detail, but it's worth understanding it. And when I uh, debug this, it will, first of all, find the prompt. It will pass it to the input function. Down here, it asks me what my name is. Now I can put my name in as David. That's fine. And can you see the input has now resolved to David? The value of David is now going to be associated with name. And when we print name, sure enough, out comes David. Okay. Oh, I think I ran it again, David. There we are. So, uh, very, very straightforward. Now, of course, the type of name is a string. If I want to put in a number and I run it, and what I'll find is, can you see David's got quotes around it here? If I run it again and put in a number, that number has got quotes around it, which means it's in fact a string. So what it means is if we want to convert it into a number, we need to do that uh, ourselves. We need to make sure that happens. So I'm going to change the question to what is your favorite number, like so. And we're going to change the variable name, good practice, to number. I can even call it favorite number. That's absolutely fine. Now, if I run it, and I put in a number, it still comes out as a string. Doesn't matter what I call the variable, it will still come out as a string. So if we want to make that into an integer, we have got to put int around this like this okay now this is kind of shorthand uh, I, what I could do is I could split it into two stages number text is set to the input and then number is set to int number text like so 
So now let's debug that. And I'm going to step into it and it's going to ask me my favorite number like this. And it's going to put that into number text. Now, what we're going to do is run the next statement and int number text, which is a string, actually converts it into the integer. There. And then it puts the integer into number, like so. And it will then print the number, like so. OK. So hopefully, I can still grab those variables. So the type of number is an integer. And the type of number text is a string. As well as using int, if we wanted a float, we could say number float is set to float number text like that. Or indeed we could put float number and it will convert it to a floating point number. If we had a number that we want to convert back to a string, then uh, we could say new number text set to str number, just like that. So it will take that number and it will convert it back into a string and store it in new number text. Now, if you have a play around with this, you'll kind of start to see how it works. How your data is represented is really important because it fundamentally affects what you can do with it. Try some of the exercises that we've gone through in this. Look and see how they work. If you've got any questions, then please do ask me.